You're listening to Matt Tribe on ABC Victoria. The management of dingoes and their possible reintroduction has long been a contentious issue. It was only back in 2021 when Parks Victoria scrapped a plan to return dingoes to Garywood Grampians National Park. This week, the state government announced a change to its dingo management in northwest Victoria. The key detail is that these changes include the end of what's called an unprotection order, which allowed dingoes to be killed on public lands despite them being listed threatened native species. Well, at the same time, a new program has been launched to help farmers protect livestock using non-lethal methods. So how radical are these changes on a national level? Ewan Ritchie can tell us. He is a Biodiversity Council member and Professor of Wildlife Ecology and Conservation with Deakin University. Hi, Ewan. Yep. Uh, how significant is the removal of this unprotection order? Oh, look, it's a really momentous occasion for dingoes in Victoria uh, and most specifically for the Wilka, as it's known by the Wachabolic people in northwestern Victoria, but I think more broadly across Victoria. It's really fantastic um, to hear and I guess see uh, the rest, you know, the wishes of First Nations peoples, uh, as well as the science to suggest that dingoes are really not doing very well at all uh, in this part of the state um, being listened to and, and the policy and management reflecting that now. Uh, uh, your research here points to this uh, being a small population of dingoes in the northwest. I, I'm, I'm up front here, uh, you and I wasn't even aware that there were dingoes in northwest Victoria. Look, I think most Victorians are probably unaware that there are dingoes in Victoria full stop, uh, let alone in the Mallee. But the truth is that there are dingoes right across Victoria, whether it's up in the Mallee, in the Alpine areas, uh, around East Gippsland, so crowding along National Park and those areas uh, and far east of Victoria, there are dingo populations spread right across the state, uh, but they aren't doing particularly well at all. And that's based on genetic work that's been done by scientists, in, including Andrew Weeks and Kylie Cairns, as well as ecological work done by our research group and others. Uh, and yeah, there are there is a population of what's known as Wilka, otherwise known as uh, dingoes. Um, Wilka is the First Nations name for them um, in in the Mallee region in Big Desert Wiperfeld. But we think that there may be fewer than fifty breeding individuals, and given the size of that area, that's really concerning, and it suggests that they may actually be on their way towards extinction. Uh, and also, the majority of these might be pure dingoes as well, Ewan. How significant is that, even at a national level? It's really significant. So again, really great work done by Dr. Kylie Cairns and also Andrew Weeks more recently um, has a showing or is about to show that the genetics of these animals uh, is basically pure. So I think there's been this idea around for a long time that Um, most of these animals out there are what people often refer to as wild dogs or feral dogs or hybrids. But new genetic tools and approaches actually show that the vast majority of these animals are in fact pure dingoes. And so that's really important. That's just not just in Victoria, but again, that's right across Australia where samples are being collected from dingoes. Uh, In almost all cases, they are in fact pure dingoes. So I think it also shows that we really need to change the way we talk about these animals. You often see um, the media, government, etc., refer to them as wild dogs, but they are really important animals to many First Nations peoples across Australia, and they refer to them as dingoes and other Indigenous names. And they're regarded as kin in many cases. So again, I think we really need to change our relationship with these animals. Certainly, uh, it is one of these conversations um, that uh, p- provokes a passionate response whenever it's talked about on yeah. uh, in a public forum, including this. Uh, we've already yep. had a, had text through this, yep. for instance, from Dave in Lake Tyres, who says, uh, Matt, uh, this is a sneaky act by the state government um, and uh, that obviously the Labor government is, as usual, pandering to the Greens to re- in return for votes. Uh, there is a danger of this being extended to the rest of Victoria. Graziers yep. are rightly outraged. How, how, right. how do you respond to that sort of uh, that sort of uh, 
uh, well, there's ob- there's yep. obviously an amount of passion there that that when we hear of an unprotection order that's yep. designed to allow dingoes to be killed on public lands, that's obviously something that a lot of Victorians think is important. Look, absolutely. And I understand the concern um, from livestock graziers. I'd say, first of all, that this is definitely not a sneaky um, you know, decision that Labor has made. This has been on the base of a long period of consultation uh, with First Nations peoples, uh, with scientists. And the good news is that we actually have scientific tools and approaches that can actually protect livestock while still maintaining dingoes in the landscape. Whether that's the use of strategic fencing to protect livestock and particularly young animals, whether that's the use of guardian animals, it's been shown to be really successful across Australia. So I'm sure many of your listeners would know the movie Oddball. Um, that is a Maremma, but there's many other breeds of dog. Also, donkeys have been used uh, to very successfully uh, protect livestock against dingoes and foxes and so forth. So we have the tools available. So it's not a case of either or. And I think, again, we really need to recognise that there are multiple groups um, across society that have interests in dingoes and, and concerns about dingoes, whether that be the farming community, whether that be First Nations peoples, whether that be scientists or just general people. All of those views need to be heard. But the great news is, again, as I said, we have the scientific knowledge and tools to be able to manage this conflict and to actually find better solutions that we've had in the past. Uh, Ewan Ritchie is my guest, Biodiversity Council Member and Professor of Wildlife Ecology and Conservation with Deakin University. We are talking dingoes this morning. Matt Tribe is my name uh, with you on air, online and on the ABC Listen app through until 11 o'clock. We'll get the latest from the Weather Bureau in terms of our weekend's weather in just a moment's time. But uh, Ewan, we've talked a little bit about dingoes in the northwest. What about in the rest of Victoria? You mentioned that Uh, the fact that there are dingoes anywhere in Victoria might come as a surprise to people. Where are they found elsewhere? Yeah, that's right. So there are dingo populations uh, out the back of the Yarra Ranges, which is, of course, not that far from Melbourne. There are dingo populations uh, in eastern Victoria in the Gippsland region, so crowding along the National Park. In the Alpine Zone, so northeast Victoria, um, there is no dingoes as far as we know in the western part of the state. So, um, you know, not not the northwest, but the western part of Victoria that we know of. Um, so they're patchily distributed, but there are absolutely dingoes spread across different areas of the state. But as I said earlier on, um, evidence suggests uh, both genetically as well as um, using things like camera traps where we try and assess you know where dingoes are present and in what numbers that they're not doing particularly well at all and in some cases some of those local populations may actually be on their way towards extinction and it's really important to remember that dingoes have an important role in the landscape so yes they do absolutely pose a risk to livestock that's unquestionable but that can be managed with scientific tools as we've discussed but they also have really beneficial roles in the landscape. That includes keeping kangaroo numbers fewer. Uh, They also control populations of feral goats, feral pigs, um, and potentially also feral cats and foxes. They help to suppress their numbers as well. And all of those things have a benefit for biodiversity and the health of our ecosystems overall. So we really need to maintain dingoes in the landscape. Ewan, really appreciate your time uh, this morning. Obviously, this this will be an ongoing uh, discussion as well uh, but um, yeah it's, I think it's important to, to touch base particularly when when we hear of these sort of changes that happen at a state level and really wonder how that's going to affect us at a local level particularly in uh, farming communities and around the northwest as well so thank you many thanks Matt that is Professor Ewan Ritchie Biodiversity Council member and Professor of Wildlife Ecology and Conservation with Deakin University